once I came here, I, in Surf Sunset, I never went back. Uh, they, they talk about uh, it was the Howleys that started the surfing on the North Shore, but actually, uh, I think Henry Priest and and George Downing and, and Wally and, and uh, they, they they came out to the North Shore quite a bit before any Howleys did. Chevy Mitchell and Courtesy Arkea and myself and and maybe Kimo, uh, we all went out to the country because they were having a big luau thing. Henry Priest was having a luau, and that was my introduction to the North Shore. I had never been on the North Shore. There wasn't much surf, but uh, we had a great time. It was slack key music and playing Hawaiian music and everything, and people were drinking. I was drinking this swipe, and uh, I didn't realize that when I uh, started uh, drinking it, it was so good, you know, it had that pineapple taste and everything, and all of a sudden my whole lower jaw got numb, and then I got numb, and, and the next morning it looked like Sherman's troops had gone through the south. There were bodies lying on the rocks and all over. I mean, it was just a scene and a half, but that was my introduction to the North Shore. My first surf session was with Ricky. We came out to sunset. All of a sudden it was 8 to 10, and we were getting caught inside, and then we were moving out to the lineup, and and by the end of the day, it was ten, a solid 10 foot, and that was our introduction, and we were totally unmanned. We had horrible boards. We had boards that would spin out at Malibu. And, uh, I took 19 swims, and Ricky took 17 swims, and I think we had the record for number of swims because our boards kept spinning out every time we took off. So, uh, probably my first 20 foot wave would be at, at uh, Waimea. I always felt comfortable in the bigger waves. And never. In all the times I surfed, I never had what I call a big, a bad wipeout. So uh, uh, people talk about all these wipeouts and they see their bodies and they, the rocks are moving underneath. And you know, they, they have all these stories about how they, they, they almost drown and everything. And I never had a bad situation uh, because uh, whenever I'd get a wipeout, I just, it, you're only down 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and the guy can hold his at the longest, and that's a two-wave hold down. So. In 1956, they dredged the sand out of Waimea Bay to build the Ala Moana Shopping Center. If you look at the old pictures of Waimea, you'll see the diving rock. There's sand that extends out about 200 yards past that. It's, there's no water near the diving rock. And the waves used to come in and close, and sh it was the outside break when it got big was a shore break. It wasn't, it wasn't really rideable. The people say that they didn't ride YMA up until a certain point. Well, the reason was because it was just a top to bottom shore break almost outside in the regular lineup. And it didn't have, it didn't hold, it didn't allow you to ride. Well, when they dug out all that sand, it made the, it caused a channel in the middle. And so it made it so that you could ride it. So in 57, it was rideable. And that's when they started to ride it. The hardest part about riding big waves is the takeoff. Once you're down on the bottom, it's a breeze. But it's that, it's that adrenaline rush to get yourself, when that wave comes, it's to get yourself into the wave. And you, to ride it right, to ride any big wave right, you have to be, you can't be on the peak. You have to be a little bit on the inside of that peak. Like at YMA, you have to be on this side, the Kuhuku side of the peak. Uh, and then you, you can come into the wave and you have to take off when it's really steep and, and you, you've got to paddle in and get down into the wave. And if you try to take off on the ledge or on the peak, your board gets held up you can't get down as easily as you can if you're over further to the inside. So the guys that really ride YMA well, John John Florence and, and, the, and uh, Jamie Mitchell, the guys that were really riding that place the way it should be ridden that day were all over, uh, Ross Clark Jones, they were all over on that that's, uh, north side of that peak and they were taking off and coming across. And the guys that were having trouble were taking off in the peak and getting stuck at the top and going over the falls. So the rush is 
is to when you see the wave is just to start paddling and going for it and not not thinking about it and not being intimidated and just go for it and then get down into the wave and then go for the angle and slide and uh, so oh I really like uh, I really like John John uh, and Kelly Slater uh, the, the, th the thing I like about them is they, they when, when they, you know, when they interview them, they're very articulate, they're intelligent, and they're nice, you know, and they're, uh, they're really good surfers. But they're not, you, you don't see, if you're out in the lineup with John John, you don't see him snaking people. Uh, you don't see him trying to hog every wave, you know. The, the guy's a real gentleman and he's just an unbelievably good surfer. A guy that is a real waterman now is this kid, uh, uh, Mark Healy. Mark Healy is a really good uh, free diver, good surfer, charges big waves. So I'd call that a waterman. And uh, Brock Little was a waterman. Just a horrible day. And then another day I'd go out and I'd get three or four good rides. Never got more than about four good rides. I, I never was much for quantity. And uh, I'd come home, I'd be real happy and cheerful. And so it, it, it's a hard thing to give up. And I still get really depressed when I see it glassy and nice and good conditions and not crowded. Surfing is a funny deal. You start off a kook, you go full circle and you end up a kook so as you get older. Aloha. <laughs> well, I hope you got something on it. <laughs>